Hey, you're watching GearWire.com. I am Owen. Uh, we're at Pitchfork Music Fest 2010 uh, with Jeff from Free Energy, and thanks for joining us. Right on. Thanks for having me. You, you knew a little bit about sort of the, the drum miking techniques on this album because it sounded like you guys are kind of going for a pretty specific era, as a, like sort of sound-wise and timbre-wise and fidelity-wise. I guess there's a certain era in terms of attitude, but I think James kept it um, rooted in the present. Okay. You know, so there's definitely a reference to '70s guitar tone and drum tone, and but at the same time, like James has a way of doing things. So like in a lot of ways. Some of the same techniques he applies to LCD, I think he applies to this band. It's yeah. just like having a really good signal going to tape, so to speak, you know, and then not having to do that much in post production, but just starting with a great sound. Yeah. You know, he'll do things with drums where if he wants them big, there's an elevator shaft, you know, and so he'll just throw a mic in the elevator shaft behind the drums, and that's how you get the big drum sound. Compress that and, you know, like manage the delay on it. and. Right. You get that kind of bottom drum sound. Yeah, oh, that's excellent. So, that's yeah. very cool. James has like fantastic technique. He really knows how to go after something. It, it's not like he's someone who's experimenting to find a sound. He knows how to go after something, which is awesome. So, the, and this is this is James Murphy, obviously, obviously from yeah. How did you guys hook up with him? Um, it was a slow process. Paul, I think I'm getting this right. Paul's first connection with DFA was through John Galkin. And Jonathan Galkin, who a lot of people don't know, is the other side of DFA. He's James's partner. He does a lot of A&R. He manages most of the day-to-day -day relationships. And Scott and Paul from our band had another band called Hockey Night before. And John Galkin heard some stuff from Hockey Night, and he knew he wanted to work with those guys. And it just wasn't time yet. And so they kept working on songs, working on demos. At first, I think James was maybe even apprehensive about working on the project and not necessarily interested, but at a certain point, I think it clicked because he's a fan of a lot of the kind of rock that we love. And he realized, like, I could do this and I could do a good job with it. So it took a while to get him on board, but then he was ready. <laughs> and so how did this band kind of come together? You're from Philly originally, right? But the rest of the guys are not? Yeah, Scott and Paul, who were the principal songwriters, had this band Hockey Night based out of the Twin Cities, amazing band that people don't know. And um, our bass player is Scott's younger brother, so they've known each other for a long time. Um, our drummer Nick has been in a bunch of awesome bands in the Twin Cities, and Scott and Paul had their eye on him for a while. I moved to Minnesota to work as a cheesemaker in Shepherd. And I played music, but you know, not in this way. And I was just friends with Evan and became friends with Scott and Paul. Yeah. Loved Hockey Night, had them play at my house for a bunch of shows. It was just good friends. We've known each other for like eight or 10 years at this point. And as that band dissolved, Scott and, Scott and Paul were still super driven to write songs and form a new band. And I guess probably three years ago, I was still living in Vermont making cheese. And Scott and Paul came and stayed with me for a week or two and started demoing some of the songs. I mean, they had been working on songs, but we recorded versions of some of the songs that were going to go on this record. I never actually had any intention to be in the band. They're just sort of like good friends. Yeah, yeah. And it was fun. And then as the ball started rolling, eventually they were like, can you play guitar? So I started playing with them, yeah, about two years ago. So what, um, have you been in bands before this band? Like, what, what was your background as a musician before this? I've been in a ton of bands, uh, none that you would have heard of. Yeah. <laughs> um, most of the music I played is what my mom refers to as that disgusting noise. <laughs> so that's what the kids like, though, yeah. right? So I've been in bands. Like, I've always loved good songwriting and good musicianship, but most of the bands I've been in have been like a bit more peripheral and experimental. Even though this is the like classic rock is what I grew up on, you know, as, as a kid, I started rating my dad's record collection, and this is how I first started learning about music. Mm -hmm. So when Scott and Paul asked me to play with them, it just it made sense because it kind of like connected with what I first loved as a kid yeah, right. about just like strong songs, big hooks, like really simple but powerful music. Yeah, I mean, it seems like really fun stuff to play a lot. It is. It yeah. is. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we have fun every time we go out there, which is nice, yeah. So, um, are you guys fans of thermodynamic uh, physics? Like, I'm, I'm just, I want to know where free energy came from. How'd you settle on that? 
We absolutely are, yeah. We, we're activists a bit in a sense there. A um, couple of us recently went to the Nikolai Tesla convention in Philadelphia. Um, also, it's just, I think we should ask questions about where we're getting our energy from and what it costs.